Hey, thanks for coming. My name is Jay. I'm the CEO and founder of Root Music. Uh, we make Bandpage uh, on Facebook and help musicians make the move uh, to, to Facebook. So uh, just to catch you up quick, we've got now over 100,000 bands uh, that are using band pages on Facebook and now over 19 million monthly active fans that are using it to interact with, with music on Facebook. We just launched a year ago, so actually two days from now is our one year birthday, so feel free to uh, come and hang out with us. We'll be having a good time. Um, so to go over the opportunity, music on Facebook looked like this um, before we came around. Where do you find the music? And where do, you, where do you find the upcoming shows? How do you interact with that? This is what we built. So you've got a call to action uh, banner at the top where you can promote your upcoming show, uh, your album, and then we've got the music player below that. Just to show you quickly how uh, the music pick player interacts, um, there's one piece of functionality that we really love that nobody else does in our space where you can share a track directly to a friend. So I would type in my friend's name just like I'm, I would tag a picture. Um, and then I can type in a custom message, you know, check out this tune, think you'd love it. And I can post it directly to uh, their Facebook wall. They can play it right from, their, right from their wall. Just last month, we had over 32 million tracks shared from a band page to a wall in one month. So that, you know, users are, are ready for this experience. They just needed something to, to be able to do it that was easy to use. Below the music player, we've got photos and videos. Below that, tour dates and under that, we pull in the wall and Twitter, so it's a succinct experience. Um, we needed to be uh, really creative in doing this, um, in allowing people to customize the page, and so it's a click and customize platform. It's kind of like building a PowerPoint presentation, but for websites. So you don't have to know any code or HTML whatsoever. You literally just click on the music player there, select your color, and, and, and you're done. Um, before we came along, this would cost you thousands of dollars to do, or you'd have to hard code it yourself as an artist. And how many artists or managers out there know how to do that, right? So, um, and that's kind of that's my background as I, I manage bands and venues, and so we really wanted to make it simple for the day-to-day -day musician uh, to use. So, to go over the potential, it doesn't matter if you're a band just starting out, garage band in the middle of Ohio, you're a big DJ. Or, or whatever, uh, anybody can use this. Uh, we've got bands all over the world that are just starting out all the way up to Rihanna or the Grateful Dead or Janis Joplin, wh whoever you listen to. Um, and obviously being on Facebook, you've got plenty of people to listen to, uh, for, you, for you to listen to your music there. Um, all your fans are there, they're interacting and they're sharing content and music wasn't a part of that yet. This is the year for music on Facebook. It hasn't been uh, done correctly, sort of in a, an efficient way or effective manner, and that's really what we're what we're doing. So just to be clear, um, we make money. Um, you know, a lot of technology startups just try to come up with a slick idea and grow from there. But I, I want to be clear around this: we've got a, a freemium model now, um, where we're already uh, a number that I'll give out is um, you know the, the standard for subscription models. If you're doing five percent. Or, or more, you're doing well, and we're well above that number uh, for, um, for subscription. Um, but when you look at this in a sort of bigger picture, um, right now we've got about 20 million monthly active users. Um, we're growing by about a million users uh, every two to three weeks. So, uh, you know, week after next will be 20, after that 21, obviously. And if you harness that power um, to make a little bit of money off of those um, off of those fans, you can do that, you can uh, turn towards advertising. There are a lot of different ways, but this last year, um, we've just really focused on growth because then you can harness that potential that's there. There, there are many ways that, that we can uh, make money and we're already doing that um, with, our, with our current model that, that we have. Um, just uh, quickly then on the team, um, everybody, all the engineers that we've had have left paying jobs, what, good paying jobs to join us. Um, because they're really interested in figuring out that puzzle. They love the energy and the vibe. We actually brought the whole company down to South by Southwest because we're a music company and we, we love what we do and, and we're really involved. We just got Chris Wiltsey, who was the executive director of the Recording Academy, um, and have Larry Marcus is actually one of our investors as well behind Pandora and SoundHound. Um, so a really great team. So uh, we're the largest entertainment app and we're actually starting to compete with Zynga 
as far as size goes. We're the sixth largest app overall on Facebook. So thank you very much. Excellent. Nice job. All right. So David, we are now into the final round, and we're really mm -hmm. beginning to look at um, long-term profitability. Do you have the team to pull this off? Uh, uh, is this creative enough to build an audience? What do you think about the company? You know, I love the passion. I think it's amazing what you guys have done. You know, you've brought in that Facebook, the MySpace kind of functionality to Facebook, which was lacking. You know, I still, at the end of the day, worry about, you know, how long it'll take or whether they'll ever Facebook themselves try to start providing those type of tools to artists directly. Um, now, it's awesome that you've got this big head start and maybe they'll buy you or hopefully they'll buy you. You've built enough technology there that makes it better for them to go after you guys and try to do it internally. But, um, you know, if they were to do it, what, what's your plan B? If they decided, you know, like, like what happened with I like, you know, where they got kind of relegated and pushed to the side and apps became less of a forefront, became a challenge for them. How do you protect yourself from that risk? Yeah, certainly. So I guess for starters, we have a really great relationship with Facebook. Um, you know, they're focused to be a platform and actually they're, they're moving more towards being just a tool integrated in the internet. You know, they could, it, they, they could go into these different avenues. And recently, you know, uh, there was a movie that was streamed on Facebook. That wasn't done by Facebook. That was done by Warner Brothers. You know, and so people kind of got confused with that, thinking, oh, Facebook's moving into the, in this direction. But it's a much bigger play for them to continue to be that massive tool for the Internet. So, um, you know, we, so, so that's there. Uh, I think the other thing is just dealing with the music business. Um, they've tried that three times. And... Uh, it didn't work, and so yep. that's why companies like ours and Zynga um, that focus in this niche uh, can, can do that and succeed. Um, if they were to, to move over, um, we've got the competitive advantage of being in the music industry, being with everybody, and uh, we've built the code base in a way that's very flexible and can be you know, shifted if it needs to be kind of like a play that Zynga did. Evan, I saw you nodding while he was talking. Why were you nodding? Well, I, 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 um, I think the question is, I, I, don't, I don't personally see a concern with, uh, with Facebook going into music, but I, I was going to ask the question sort of about, um, you know, what happens if they do sort of charge for the space. But I had some other questions as well. But, you know, um, when I, just as an artist, I'll speak on behalf of artists, being an artist for 17 and a half years. You, you did make a comment saying it's as easy as a PowerPoint. Um, from an artist, I would probably just change that. I mean, it's, it's fine, but I, most friends of mine who are artists probably don't know how to open a PowerPoint. But it is really, it does look amazing. I'm just saying, share with that. They so like, my questions they are, like Keynote. Huh? They like Keynote. Yeah, no, it's something simple. Um, first of all, I had questions. How do you define a user? You're getting all yeah, these users. How do you guys define that? Um, and then uh, in terms of... Um, you guys created sort of a static page. How often do you see the band? I just want to ask from an artist. Like, how often... Do you expect the artist to update that, or is it just sort of a static page for something for a month? How often are artists updating those pages? Sure. So we define a user by uh, an individual that interacts with the the band page um, once a month. So that that can be. So if you go to you know the Grateful Dead's page, your band page, as well as uh, Fifty Cent's band page, uh, you're counted once over that month, no matter no matter how many times you like click sure. and interact with that button, um, and that's how. That's how we define the user. Okay. And what about the, how often is the artist? Oh, and the artist, yeah, they, they log in. I mean, so Drake is a guy that uses it as well. So anytime he's trying to promote, you know, uh, a new, he does it for every show. And so as he's on tour, the banner space, um, you know, like, like you saw there, can, it's literally like takes a minute to switch the images and, and change around the, the functionality of it. And we're starting to build out uh, really heavy tools as far as like marketing and fan engagement. Um, as well, and so they're turning those on and off all the time. So, a couple times, at least a couple times a month. Do you guys host and stream the files? Pardon? Do you guys host and stream the files? Do they upload files to you? Um, we're we the hosting is done by SoundCloud, YouTube, or Vimeo. I see. Yeah. Michael, you've been around this business a while. What do you think? Well, uh, in 1997, I launched a company called MP3.com around helping bands build their web pages. So I think the idea is pure genius, <laughs> and. Um, uh, I, and actually, you know, the two, the two good folks, David, I, 
I think you have to ask the question if you're on Facebook, you know, just like Twitter, as they get big, they're just like, week, you know, hey, uh, yeah. we don't want any more clients, bam. So I think it's always a risk when you're building someone else's platform that, you know, if you're Microsoft, they decide, well, we like Microsoft Word business, goodbye Word Perfect, you know, and so like that. So I think that is a concern. Um, so you got to get big quick to, to battle that. That's the answer, right? You got to get big quick. Um, stats. Do you give uh, uh, the artist stats about what's going on? What are people clicking on? That kind of stuff. Um, not not currently today, but certainly you know obviously we can we can track the amount of things that, that are happening within that page, and that's something a lot of people have been asking. So for. when they click on I want to play this song. And, and maybe it's on YouTube and maybe it's on SoundCloud. Do you trap on that data right now? Yeah, we know, we know everything that's happening within the page. Yeah. Okay. And, and the question, this was a great question about your users and how do you find them. I'll ask that question in a different way, which is, can you touch the users? You said you have 19 million fans, right? That's the number you used, What's right? It? Yeah. Okay. Can, can you touch them? Can you, like, reach out and email them or alert them? Or do you have a way of, of, of you know, waving at them? Yeah, so I'll just reiterate, we've been up for a year, so we've, we're, we've just built kind of the baseline, and these are, the, these are all the things that we're looking to do over this next year. So, you know, from day one to now, we've, we've had this traction, and so from today, you know, till next year, these are the things that we're going to be focusing on, is really how to leverage that power, and there, there absolutely are ways of doing that. We're already doing that a bit. Um, we just launched uh, some email functionality that we're capturing that information. But would yeah. Facebook give you the, ab the ability to do that? Because that's actually... Absolutely, a, through Facebook Connect. Yeah. The, okay, through Facebook Connect, but you're already on Facebook, aren't you? Pardon? You're already on Facebook. So when, when they click... Um, so, for example, when they would capture an email address, it asks for their... Um, it, it asks for their email and their zip, and so we're starting to get pieces of their information. Oh, the allow. What's on, that? On the allow when they... Uh -huh. You guys for exactly. allow. Okay. Yeah. And I can take that data somewhere else? Um, yeah, I mean, we can use that. Uh, the artist uses that. We give that information... And they, and they can then get off Facebook and just have all that email, all the data and stuff and talk to yeah, people Yeah, again, directly. we're very focused on the artists, uh, making sure that we're making powerful products, you know, for them. This is, you know, my background, again, comes from managing bands and venues. And so understanding it from that practical kind of day-to-day -day usage, um, that's the, the, those are things that get frustrating to an artist. And so we want to make sure to make that powerful. Larry, what do you see? So I guess I was asked to do this because I'm involved in the space and sometimes you know, they say if you're not conflicted, you're not involved. So um, I, I met Jay back before he even launched it. He was pitching it to me. And after a few weeks of launch, just from hearing what he was saying prior, the focus really on Facebook and the love of the fans and the bands was really just very special. And that I got involved, you know, for that reason. Um, so I, I've had sort of the benefit of seeing the execution over time, and it's really just, you know, a very simple and clear approach to help the bands and, and reach the fans, and I will not fill out my card on this one, because <laughs> it'll just mess up the scoring, so you can just wait the other, the other uh, judges here. Uh, out of the four majors, um, for the artists that they have 360 deals with, are any of the four majors using you um, for those artists that they have control of the pages for? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's just like the managers. Right? Which one? Um, name a few. And a... Universal, Warner, EMI, uh, Sony. Sony. What, yeah, I mean, all, all of those. We, so, we work so with once every... They use you for one artist, Pardon? That, once they use you for one artist that they have 360 control over, are they then going, oh, this is great, across I'm going to use it across all the yeah, artists we have control over? Absolutely. So... Okay. Yeah, we were um, just in, you know, France, then London, then New York, L.A., and Nashville, and talking with all the majors uh, about that. And they started to, to do that. So, you know, we spent a day in the Sony building with RCA, GI, Columbia, and Legacy. And that's what's starting to happen is that, they're, you know, they tried it out uh, when we were a couple months in. Yep. Then they started bringing a few on, and now they're rolling it out, and we're helping them do that. Awesome. So we got about 50 seconds left, Michael. I got one question for Jay. Have you registered... MySpaceIsDead.com. 
<laughs> because, because quite frankly, that's what I see happening here, right? MySpace is dying, right. Facebook is moving into the, yeah. the central mm -hmm. band thing. It happened to my company when Universal shut down mp3.com. That's why all the bands went to MySpace, because they had no home. So uh, I think leveraging the hell out of MySpace's Thank decline yeah. um, is, would be very advantageous, well, Jay. We, and we do that before he gets a chance yeah, to do right. it. That's right, because <laughs> I'm going to register right now. Pilar, get on it. Yeah. Um, no, we, you know, we help, that's what we do. We help bands make the move to, to Facebook and make my, that transition. MySpace should have just changed their model to your model. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Jay, congratulations. It, it's, it's definitely something that's worthwhile, obviously, for an artist needs, needs to have some pres presence on Facebook. And yeah. so that's awesome you guys are doing it. Thank and you. with that, we are out of time. Cool. Thank you very much. Right, thanks.